Is it too good? Uh, so that's the uh, uh, title of uh, the paper I encourage you to read, but I'm also going to expand a bit on that because uh, the underlying library grammatical parser that's on Hackage uh, has more stuff than that that wouldn't fit in the paper, and uh, some of it is more recent, so uh, pay attention, even if you intend to read the paper. So. Uh, I'm guessing most of you are aware of uh, the state of the Haskell ecosystem document uh, maintained by Gabriel Gonzalez, where he uh, divides various facets of uh, Haskell programming experience into different, well, classes. And at the top, uh, as best in class among all the industrial languages, there's maintenance, maintenance concurrency and parsing and in uh, not so well supported stuff, uh, we have education and uh, database debugging support. So, what should we work on? Well, there's two schools, schools of thought on self-improvement or improvement of anything we love. We can work on uh, amending our weaknesses and you know, developing a well-rounded uh, character, I guess. But, uh, so if you're in that school of thought, you're going to work on an ID to help developers. I'm not one of those noble souls. So I said I'm going to make Haskell better at parsing, or parser maintenance better yet. So why exactly is Haskell uh, considered best in class uh, when it comes to uh, parsing? Well, most programming languages uh, provide, at best, uh, two ways to handle model inputs and process them. For smaller inputs uh, and simpler structures, there's regular expressions. And for uh, large inputs, uh, there's formal grammars uh, from which we can generate uh, some parser. And there's problems with both of them. Uh, regular expressions are typically not really a first-class citizen. They may be expressible via some um, uh, literals as in uh, JavaScript, but they can't be analyzed. We can just apply them to input and uh, that's it. And they cannot be combined together, typically. Formal grammars are, of course, completely outside the language. Uh, so we just take some generator and uh, apply it to the grammar and we get uh, opaque function that we can only call. We uh, cannot combine it with anything else. Haskell is the best because it has the middle solution, uh, parser combinators, uh, which opposed, as opposed to these two uh, are regular part of the language. They can be combined. So what's there to improve? Well. As usual, there's a flip side to being uh, expressive and combinable, and it's that uh, it becomes hard to analyze. So whereas uh, regex and formal grammars uh, are simple enough to be uh, really well optimized by regex engine or a generator, parser combinators, once we combine them, are, well, combinable, but can't be taken apart. And that does have uh, consequences. So no parser combinator library provides left recursion support. Uh, memoization and similar techniques would be very handy, but uh, we don't have them there. And generally, there's no automatic optimization because there's no analysis. Uh, one reason is that uh, especially monadic parsers are too dynamic, they can be constructed at runtime. And the other reason is uh, that they rely on primitive recursion to be constructed. And primitive recursion uh, being uh, Turing complete, uh, well, is impossible to analyze. So the problem has been recognized before. 
and uh, first uh, monadic parsers have gradually been uh, de-emphasized. Uh, there's they have not been completely removed. Uh, we still occasionally need them. But uh, first arrows and then applicative functors uh, have now replaced uh, monadic parsers as uh, the mechanism to use. The other part of the problem, uh, that's been harder to fix. Uh, there have been attempts, but they haven't caught on. And uh, this is the list of uh, the libraries that uh, are publicly available that uh, try to fix it. Uh, why not have they caught on? Well, it's hard to guess, uh, but m my guess is that the first problem is uh, the biggest because they don't reuse uh, the familiar combinators. Uh, there's also the problem that uh, parsers, as I said, are composable. Grammars uh, so far have not been. And there's recursive do, uh, which I guess also people are not uh, very fond of. So let's look at uh, some examples in each library. And uh, they all uh, basically implement uh, arithmetic expression of some form, because that's, I guess, the Rosetta Stone of uh, parser libraries. So. Frisbee was uh, the first one, and uh, you can't see any applicative combinator here, can you? Uh, but otherwise, it's fairly readable. It uh, uses uh, recursive do. And note that in the end, even though it constructs this grammar, it returns just one of the productions, the top level one. So we end up with a parser, not a grammar. All the other productions are lost. Next one in time uh, was grammar combinators, which is in some respects the most ambitious one. Um, I won't make any comment on uh, the combinators here, but they're not applicable. Uh, it, it's not using recursive do, but it requires quite a bit of setup uh, uh, behind the scenes before uh, you can actually write uh, this grammar. Early is uh, the newest one, uh, well, apart from mine. And finally, we have regular uh, applicative combinators used. Still, however, it relies on uh, a recursive do, and uh, it only returns a single parser out of the whole grammar. This, however, is quite readable already. And now we come to my solution. So uh, this is pretty much uh, all you need. Well, almost. There's a line missing. So there's no recursive do. There are applicative uh, combinators. And monads are usable as well. <laughs> and what you can see here is that it's uh, using uh, definitions much like primitive recursion, except uh, they're wrapped in a uh, record every f record field uh, contains a single production. Now, why would we do that? Well, if you just apply the function fix here and extract a single parser, this actually can be applied today to, uh, say, autoparsec. I tried it. You will end up uh, with a parser constructed just fine relying again on primitive recursion because fix is going to collapse uh, this uh, function on records into a single record. But that's hardly the point we're after. So there is another way to uh, collapse the function using, the fun uh, using fix grammar instead of grammar, uh, which uh, with appropriate parser gives you things like, say, uh, uh, memoization. And uh, lo the library comes with a choice of parsers. Uh, the paper talks about Packrat uh, mostly, but uh, uh, there's, as I said, choice of parsers including a left recursive context free parser. So, how does fixed grammar function work? 
it's not magical, it's just applying uh, that uh, function uh, which maps uh, records to records to a self-referring uh, record of uh, uh, productions where each production just contains a non-terminal to itself. Uh, so self-referring is kind of magical. <coughs> and uh, here in particular is type signature for the self-referring uh, method of the left recursive uh, parser. Uh, there's a bunch of these weird uh, rank two dot something uh, classes. So I need to talk about those. Those are basically uh, the standard uh, type constructor classes like functor, replicative, uh, foldable, traversable, but from a parallel universe, uh, or parallel category at least. But uh, I'm not a category theorist, so I'm not going to speculate there. Uh, methods of these classes all uh, have rank two types. And uh, they operate on uh, uh, data types of kind star to star to star, rather than uh, the regular uh, constructor methods that operate on just star to star. So we have uh, the hierarchy, almost standard hierarchy, functor to apply to applicative, and also foldable, traversable, and uh, distributive, which is semi-standard uh, in uh, the regular universe. And uh, if you want to uh, use the library and uh, these uh, classes they on uh, some record, uh, the record has to instantiate these classes. And here's an example for uh, the arithmetic record we've seen before. Uh, so instances are fairly mechanical and really doesn't make sense to force everybody to write these. So you can just import a template Haskell uh, template instead and instantiate it. So that's the one line that was missing uh, from that slide. OK, so now that we've seen that uh, it's doable, what's it good for? Well, I said I'd improve the maintenance of parsers. Uh, so here's one example. We have that uh, grammar from the previous slide. And say uh, we want to. Uh, to vary it a little. And here's one way to do it. We just take the grammar and replace uh, its one uh, production. In this case, uh, we're going to allow comma to be inside uh, the numeric literal, say, for 1,000 uh, places. <coughs> we can do fancier stuff, like uh, we can uh, do a bunch of mixings that uh, can be mixed into the grammar uh, as needed. So here we first define uh, an empty grammar with the same productions. And then we replace its one production. Say in this case, uh, we allow exponentiation. We parse exponentiation using this uh, uh, production. And then we can just mix in this uh, new exponentiation production into the regular grammar. And in both of these cases, uh, we have not touched the original grammar. We're just uh, adding stuff, creating new grammars out of it, which might be handy for things like, uh, I don't know, language extensions or uh, different language versions. However, in uh, both cases, we were working with uh, the same grammar with the same set of productions and the same field types, which uh, doesn't always work. So if you really want to target ext extensibility, we have to plan ahead a little. So there's three things we should assure. Uh, so the first two. The first uh, point is covered by this. What does it mean, uh, non-terminal starry grammar? Well, in the original, grammar arithmetic appears twice 
uh, in, uh, well, four times in the definition. The inner one, the inner arithmetic, is the type of the grammar that non-terminals are referring to. And uh, if you just generalize that, we can inject non-terminals that refer to some other bigger grammar. So that's one thing. Uh, the other two points are bar covered by this. Uh, so we just throw in some extra non-terminals. And we uh, replace this fixed type int by some parameter uh, semantics. And then, having done that, this is an example of an expanded left recursive uh, grammar doing all that. Also, uh, parametrizing the input type with any textual monoid so that we can parse text, uh, string, byte strings. Uh, the library comes with uh, an example of uh, five grammars for five languages listed here into one language, again, without actual modifications of uh, the uh, individual languages. They're all self-contained. And to achieve that, we have to use that semantic domain. Uh, so we apply the uh, finally tagless approach here. So there's uh, two domains that uh, work with arithmetic uh, alone. But once we embed it into the big language, we have to use a different domain. So in that example, uh, we use the tagged domain that can uh, contain integers, booleans, or functions, because we have uh, lambdas there as well. So it seems to be uh, an interesting new way to uh, put together a language. Now, reviewers have been bugging me to uh, uh, provide more tests and uh, measurements, so I have belatedly done some. Uh, first, Lua. Uh, which I chose because uh, <coughs> there, were there are already two existing uh, implementations on Hackage, uh, one of which uh, is actually using early. So nice point of comparison. Also, uh, Lua's official grammar is just beautiful. It's uh, only 41 lines, uh, and it's uh, non-ashamedly left recursive and non-LR uh, grammar. Uh, Though operator precedences are se separately specified, and uh, they have a strange understanding of precedence, and the lexical layer is separate as well. So you can see the numbers here. Uh, uh, the uh, grammar uh, with grammatical parsers is uh, maybe half the size altogether. Uh, it's substantially faster than early, but even more substantially slower than the generated parser. I'm still working on uh, performance issues. Uh, the other test, uh, I picked uh, WebIDL, again, because there was an existing uh, implementation on Hackage, though it's incomplete, and uh, it's based on Parsec. So I just took the parsec definition and uh, did the minimal modifications in order to uh, switch it to grammatical parsers. Uh, oh, the nice thing about WebIDL grammar is that it's uh, LL1, uh, so it can be equally parsed with uh, CFG, or uh, it can be treated as a CFG or as a PEG grammar, uh, parsing expression grammar. So I got to test all the existing parsers. And the numbers are here. So obviously, uh, uh, memoization and uh, less recursive uh, ability add substantial overhead. But uh, otherwise, it's in the neighborhood of Parsec. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, 
Well, as I said, uh, there's, there I did have the example uh, in a, as a part of the library where uh, I construct a language out of uh, separate languages. So I'm hoping to expand on that library so that people can j just pick up uh, pieces and kind of uh, plug and play uh, together a bigger language. Uh, that's unproven and uh, subject to future work, I guess. Uh, I don't have uh, concrete experience other than that. Uh, so interface is uh, completely the same, uh, but uh, the semantics of uh, the choice is different. So in uh, PyCrat uh, only applies to parsing expression grammars, uh, which have uh, uh, local choice. So if the left uh, parser succeeds, it's taken, and we never try the second one, even if the continuation fails. Uh, and of course, it's not capable of left recursion, because uh, parsing expression grammars generally wouldn't be. Yes. Uh, so, grammars are uh, well functions uh, uh, functions uh, from record to the same record, uh, endomorphic functions. So, uh, there's nothing uh, magical about it. Uh, you can just construct a function to the same way you would construct any other function in Haskell. Uh, we can take existing parsers, combine them, uh, inject them into a grammar, a single uh, production or multiple productions, whatever we want, then combine it into the, an, an existing grammar, for example, and uh, modify that way. So there's no code generation as far as it goes. Um, so this implies uh, changes to the existing grammar definitions. Yes. Ah, uh, completely new, yeah, uh, so uh, the list of uh, grammar productions is fixed. Now we could, uh, but we can take two, there are examples uh, in, uh, yeah, so we could take an existing grammar and uh, uh, build a product of that grammar and another Grammar, which may be a single production. So in that way, that way, yes, it's also doable uh, at runtime. I believe there would be slight performance impact there, though, because uh, every non-terminal would have to uh, uh, go extra in direction to fetch uh, the results. Yeah. 